early 1950s RCA portable black and white this is a KCS 100 RCA chassis numbers were the black and whites were all started with KCS and went from I don't know one up to 200 and the the color sets CTC started I think at CTC 2 and then went up to whatever 250 I don't know uh, most of them we work on are in the mid 100s or the CTC mid mid to late teens early 20s so I think this is more along the lines of a resurrection or a part set these are a little bit desirable uh, people like these because they're small this one is this one might not be anything it's like missing everything but they come with a fancy little base in fact now that I look at it this should probably be if it's got any usable parts it should probably be passed off to someone who collects these because I'm sure there's someone who collects them <clears throat> And I believe there were two or three different types of these. There was one that was a series string. Uh, and there was one with a power transformer that used all six volt tubes. I don't know what this one is. But this one is in uh, pretty marginal condition. I mean this is resurrection material right here. If we can get it to work. A friend of mine gave this to me. I have no idea what we're looking at here. eight PT seven oh three four T ninety watts. Looks like it's got new capacitors in it from those colors. Let's let's get it open. It's already all disassembled and do a good inspection on it, see if we can if there's any hopes of making it work. Well that took an unruly amount of force Wow, to get it to come out. So we got a paper capacitor there. A tie wrap here. Someone's definitely been in here. The tuner shield is gone. We always love to see that nonsense. Are these like legit orange drops or what? Where is my flashlight? So this is obviously the 6 volt version. We have the power transformer there. Looks like we got some new electrolytics. Looks like they J hooked them in and the soldering looks decent. I I definitely prefer J hooking and but creating a solid mechanical bond before soldering and that doesn't look like that's the case with that uh Electrolytic, it looks like it's just laid there and soldered. So we have well, the other thing that goes wrong with these is the yolks disintegrate the plastic. So they didn't change this, and these generally suck. Flip it over here. Okay, we have a missing vacuum bulb. Uh, what is that? It uses an 8DP4. We have a replacement electrolytic here. Why do we have an electrolytic connected directly to the damper tube unless that's an unused pin? Yeah, 
You know, I gotta say, looking at this and trying to understand this is outside of my public education skill set. 6CG7, 6AX4, 6BQ6. So that's a 6BQ6, 6AX4. So what tube goes here? Is this the 1V2? Doesn't 1V2 use a plate cap? I need to go dig the schematic up on this because here, this is a 6CG7. Wonder why these tubes are branded Emerson. Is this made by Emerson? This is branded RCA. Uh, this is a. I wonder if this is one of those. It didn't work, so I looked it up on the internet, and the internet told me to recap it before turning it on. So I spent three days and seventy-five dollars in genuine orange drops recapping it, and it still didn't work. So I gave up on it and gave it away, or threw it away because I was disgusted that the internet was wrong and the capacitors didn't fix it. So with that thought in mind, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the vacuum filled transistor bulb and see if it's got a picture inside. I am going to use the Super Mac because I can test for uh, shorts as well as emissions and cutoff. So let's see, 6.3. This is on filament set. Looks like the filament's there. It's putting a load. I'm going to go to 6 volts. Okay, no HK shorts. No G1 shorts. Ooh, geez, we have cutoff. Look at that. Well, the picture bulb is strong. Yeah. That's a 6 volts, too. Let's go down to, uh, let's take it down here to uh, a little bit below 6 volts. Yeah, this thing's got a strong tube in it. That's a good sign. Wonder, wonder about the flyback. I noticed they didn't do anything with this selenium rectifier. Maybe that's a problem. Okay, we have the riders here. Hard copy. I also bought the full rider set. Somebody scanned it. I have that on my phone. It's not cheap, but when you resurrect D a lot, it saves the hassle. Let's see, KCS 95, KCS, okay, we went to Sears, so it looks like I skipped over it. KCS 95, why would KCS 100, according to the, here we go, KCS 100B, here's the schematic, let me see what I can find here, ooh, this even tells you how to disassemble it to work on it, I say these, yeah, so here's the little mid-century MCM base that it so, uh, do not install, remove, or handle the picture bulb in any manner unless shatterproof goggles are worn. People not so equipped should be kept away while handling picture bulbs. Keep picture bulb away from children. They make it sound like it's a, a damn... Uh, unstable. Yeah, I keep those words out of the video. 
So anyway, um, let's see here. Okay, here's what we're looking for. So, 6BQ6, 6AX4, and 1V2. So the the rectif the high voltage rectifier is missing out of here. So it goes there. But yeah, this breaks it down into layers. These things are so comprehensive. Okay, so let's see. 1v2 does 1v2 have a cap on it 5800 volts that's what that CRT runs on now that I think about it isn't 1v2 a um, color TV high voltage uh, focus rectifier tube I think that's what this is so can I just stick like a microwave oven diode in this temporarily? I'm impatient, man. I want my TV now. So, 1 and 9. Uh, so a diode, 1 and 9 would point at 5 and 6. Crap, so I had the bit rate turned way down on the camera because the last thing I was capturing was just doing a setup on a TV so yeah uh, I hope it didn't make this look too bad this is on the higher bit rate that I usually use so anyway I don't think anybody missed anything there I'm gonna I'm gonna I pulled the plate cap off of this uh, I'm gonna test that fuse let's see well, according to this, that fuse is blowed, which is not a good thing because that, I believe that's the, the cathode current fuse or the plate fuse for the high voltage section. So that is not a good sign. It's only a quarter amp fuse. We should look at the schematic. This capacitor here is a 68 at 450. And I would expect the ESR to be lower on this. I'm going to probe the four sections of this can. Okay, here's section one. Acceptable from a, for an original capacitor from the 50s. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. Doesn't mean it's not shorted or leaky or going to get hot and explode and that's acceptable so all the sections on this are are acceptable for use in this TV as an original capacitor from the 1950s uh, like I said it still could be leaky and get hot and try and reform and blow up and short and blow up and short between sections and cause the TV to go up and smoke but let's see what else is there that's a 033 I wonder why they didn't change that there's a lot of mysteries here okay that fuse is right there and that fuse provides the B plus to the damper which then provides B plus through the flyback to the high the horizontal output. So we have a high voltage issue with this set. Uh, we don't know what it is. It could just be that the oscillator is not running. It could be the flyback's bad. It could be a problem with capacitors. It could be the yoke is shorted. Could be the damper's bad or the high, the horizontal output is shorting. Something sucked too much power up through this fuse into the high voltage circuit. 
think that's a 200 watt bulb. I've got my milliamp meter here. I'm going to hook it across the, um, I guess I should put this back on. I'm going to hook it across the fuse. Let's just see what happens here. I'm not too worried about this. I don't really care enough to bring it up slow or anything like that. Okay. Wow, does that damper look like it got smoked? Look at the edges of the... I want to be very careful here. I don't want to... interesting how that's doing that that's probably about right I am going to pull the horizontal oscillator tube out we should see this skyrocket well, we don't quite see it skyrocket, but it does go up a little bit. I can hear it. Sounds like there's activity here. Don't try this at home, kids. So we ain't got no scrub. Do you know got no scrub? Because I know got no scrub. Yeah, we know got no scrub. Yeah, we we ain't got no scrub there neither. Should be able to draw a uh, two or three millimeters of an arc off of that. Okay, good. I have the Sams for this turd burglar. Let's see what we got here. 1956, 57. Really? I thought these things stopped at 52. But yeah, I'm curious to find because these don't show. Uh, where all the components are like the SAMs show and I want to find out what that capacitor is at 68 okay that is C1 and it looks like it's hooked to the right place well it says 60 and they used a 68 so that's about as close as you can get somebody tried they really tried. I pull the damper out and the, ca the current goes almost to zero, which eh, there might be a little leakage or something there, but I just look at this and this just looks like it's freaking burn up. I mean, almost like it was, the plate was glowing red, that's why it lost its color. But it's obviously not totally dead because it's passing some current. 6AX4. And you know, this is not this is not really relevant because uh, you're not testing it under high voltage pulse situation conditions.
again you're not testing it under high voltage pulse conditions but it looks okay this this tester always reads on the low side so in the yellow is okay okay for this one it says e2 and e7 anything over 50 is okay I think the socket's a little bit. It's close to 50. That's dead. What am I doing wrong here? E2 and E7. Okay, it's just a socket. So it, this tube is fine. This is the oscillator, but we pretty much knew that. Could hear it. Uh, and we could see the current. So the next step is going to be we're going to take a scope and we're going to look at the signal going into the output tube. Hey, I'm looking at this. We got a this little capacitor here is a zero zero to two. NTE. NT then we got a forty seven K there, uh, and then right here we have. From the 47K to ground, we have a 103. 103 is 0.01. I'm looking at this. So there's our 022. Here's our 47K. So there's our 47K. And then we have a 0012 here. Uh, zero, 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 0001 would be 102. And they have a 103 here. This is a very, very common mistake being off by a factor of 10. Um, this could be the whole problem or a large part of it. You're pulling the damn horizontal th signal to ground through a capacitor that's 10 times bigger than what should be there. Okay, let's take a look at 473. That's 047. So that is this right here from pin 4 to ground. Yes, that is correct this capacitor here is incorrect it should be a 102 not a 103 so this is our waveform on the control grid and this is always important to look at this uh, we have 10 volts peak to peak there at 11.6 kilohertz and I can hear it screaming so I could turn this and this is speeding it up Of course, the higher the frequency we go, the lower the voltage because the capacitor's too damn big. Focus, please. So there we're at 13 and we're at 8 volts. Let's go up a little higher. That looks like it's as high as it'll go. Yeah, it's got the wrong capacitor in it. Now this is hard to read. Is this 95 volts peak to peak? Unacceptable. Um, yeah, point zero zero one two. That's C. God, I can't even read this. C fourteen. C14, C74, I, I, I got to get a better schematic than this. Okay, so I got to get a better schematic. Um, 
I'm gonna tr we'll look at this on the desktop and see if it's more intelligible than on the phone. Um, but yeah, I think at a minimum we got a capacitor that's off by a factor of ten there. Um, 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 um. The sad thing is going to be is if this in fact was the mistake that killed this project, I don't have any of the rest of the accessories, the base, the knobs, the bezel thing that goes in here. So it's essentially a brick because they screwed up and they got frustrated and didn't put it back together. So probably all the rest of this stuff is in a landfill somewhere and the TV is right here, which is hopefully might turn out to be a very simple fix. Wow. Are these like chemtrails? Is that what this is? Look at this over here. There's the moon over there. This is not a very good camera to be doing this, but look at this. They're really getting their spray on tonight, geez. There's another one out there. Look at that one. These things absolutely be popping tonight. Wow, look at how big that one is spread out. The whole thing is just streaks. And then there's the moon. See if we can zoom in on the moon. Here's a new one. I'm actually not too worried about it because I know the earth is flat and by the time they come down they'll come around and land on the back side. Now they're turning orange as they release their toxic uh, goodness upon us. It's a trip, man. They just keep growing and growing and spreading out like forever. Looking at it here on the desktop, you can clearly see that should be a point zero zero one two and there should be ninety five volts peak to peak there we had eight volts peak to peak even if we look here you can clearly see point zero zero one two mfd uh... can't read the voltage six hundred volts but yeah they're off by a factor of ten Oops, maybe I better take a look into this one right here. I don't remember seeing this big one in there. C3. Probably need to double check this whole setup. That is this capacitor here. Maybe that's at 4.7 we saw down lower. So... 0 0.0012 is basically 1200 picofarads, 1200 picofarads. So I didn't have that, so I made one out of a thousand and a 220 in parallel. And this is measuring uh, 1222 picofarads. This is 
10,000 picofarads. So I was over at a friend's shop and he's retiring and so I filled the car here up with parts and Sam's and about another 30 TVs and guess what he had he had a red which is down in there KCS 100 so I had to make him a offer of a few bucks on it and here it is now unfortunately this one is missing all the same components that the other one is but I think we can get enough out of this just to compare because I hate cleaning up another person's recapping mistake mess that just is a uh, I'm really impressed with myself that I found that problem that quick but hey if that thing's got a bad flyback or bad yoke hopefully we got one here well all I can say to this is shit Am I allowed to say that word here? Because that's about what this is. Uh, the flyback has been removed. Um, this is sort of interesting. The selenium stick focus rectifier right there. That's what I was talking about replacing the 1V2 with. So this thing wasn't worth one dollar unless the picture bulb is good. But still, this thing is, this is a brick, literally. It's even the right color. But will it, what it will allow us to do is it will allow us to double check. <laughs> they're, they're all melted together. Oh, jeez. They're all melted together. Stand by. Okay, this is... Come along and ride on a wax-tastic voyage. What is the value? So it is a 0 .0012 5% at unknown voltage. So we definitely, the previous recapper got that wrong. This will be a lot easier just to look at this and compare the capacitors uh, rather than try and root through the schematic but yeah this is this is disappointing right here so the flyback is a problem where's the fuse on this one the fuse is just gone look at this wax capacitor hidden under here they didn't get it on here they didn't get it it's the original down in there so yeah they literally had the same idea I did replace the 1v2 with a stick rectifier Yep. Well, where'd the flyback go? I got this powered back up and um, 13 uh, kilohertz at 9.3 volts. We're back looking at the control grid. What I'm going to do is with this thing turned on, I'm going to change these capacitors out. In fact, if the irons heated up, what I'm going to do, I should probably set the voltage up a little bit higher on this that way when if the voltage spikes up to to uh, 100 volts like it should so there we go we're on the 10 volt scale okay I'm gonna pop this capacitor out and look at what happened there Wow, it went up to 250 kilohertz. Uh, that's cranking along pretty fast. Okay, let's put the right uh, capacitor in here and let's see what it does. Well, it drops down to uh, 35 kilohertz at 25 volts. <laughs> 
So let me solder that. And now if you'll remember yesterday I adjusted this up because it was at all, I think it started at 11. So here we go, I'm gonna try and turn it down now. Thirty four kilohertz, thirty three kilohertz, thirty two. Well, look at that waveform, that's interesting. There we go. Well, that is one kooky doobler looking. There we go, look at that. 53 volts. And I believe I've like run the core all the way out of the tuning. Well, maybe not. Okay, 14.7 kilohertz. It's about where we want to go. Now look at where it's 63 volts now. That's not quite 90, but it's a hell of a lot better than 6 or 8 volts. Try and go back up with this a little bit. All this stuff has got to be right. So that waveform looks good now, too. Uh, we're at 14.8 at 62 volts. I wonder if we get an arc. Okay, well. Here's our cathode current now. The damper, I had to push it in. Here the damper's warming up. Ooh, something popped. Okay, so we're definitely a lot lower now than we were. So we're at 70 volts at 14.3, so we're a little slow. Okay, let's try this. Oh! Oh! You like that? Does that make you happy? Does that make me look professional? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to borrow this thing right out of here. And we're going to stick this in there. Let's see if we get El Raster. Okay, what do we think? Does the internet approve? Do I need approval of the internet? Oh, maybe I should plug the damper tube back in, huh? Plug the damper tube back in while it's powered up just to make the internet happy. So I can say, I'm safe. I'm safe. I like to be safe. I'm a professional. There we go. Watch our milliamps here. Turn our light off. No raster. The vacuum bulb lighting up. So you have Sparkle Pony Master Play here. You know, that's, of course, that's DC, but yeah, it's working. You, it's not much DC, but it's only supposed to be, what, five kilovolts? And, and don't do it like that. Don't, yeah. Let's see your power. Contrast brightness. Oh, 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 contrast, there it is, what 
Boy, the vertical is twacked. I'm going to get a high voltage gauge and I'll measure that. Wow, right about five kilovolts. No problem there. I'm sure these tubes are not in virgin. Uh, they could probably be a little bit. And I'm sure the B plus is a little low because it's still got the selenium rectifier in it. But that's okay. In fact, we could probably check the B plus real quick. In fact, you know what? I'm going to leave that for tomorrow kind of thing because it's pretty impressive where we got so far with this. I'd like to find the proper tube and um, I'm sure the vertical, if it doesn't, if he doesn't, didn't recap it with the right capacitors like the horizontal, then the vertical is going to be screwed up. So we identified the problem that shut down his restoration project. Capacitor that was supposed to be 1,200 picofarads. Let me try and say that again. A capacitor that was supposed to be 1,200 picofarad, 1,200. He put a 10,000 picofarad. And what this is, this selenium stick rectifier is out of a color television focus circuit. And it might be slightly warm. I don't think it's designed to carry the current that a, a CRT pulls. It's, it's just like microamp static charge on the focus plate in the color TV CRT, not running the whole anode of a tube. I, I don't, that's not a good idea long term. Okay, I'm sure everybody is asking the question, how good is the CRT in the red set, part set with the missing flyback? Well, let's find out here. Go to about six volts. I hope I'm using the right. Now eh, this is the only socket there is. Oh, here it comes. Okay. Well. We actually have some cutoff here. Assuming that B is the bias setting they want, but let's try C. So we got nothing on C. Usually these black and white tubes are B. I guess I could look it up, but yeah, this tube is strong. Let's try uh Let's see what what am I at filament voltage wise? I'm right about on, so yeah. So the picture bulb in the red set is uh, good. So I guess it was worth it based on that. Um, like I say, these sets generally didn't get much use. I mean, who would want to voluntarily watch something that you practically need magnifying glasses to see? Okay, um, let's get back to this. Let's see if we could get this to work. And the tuner seems kind of dead, so I'm going to stick a clip lead on it here for for a uh, antenna we'll just see if we get some activity a little bit okay. 
Ye. Yee-dee-dee-dee! Boy, gets K-Rap FM. Doesn't sound like it does too well with the bass, does it? I could just listen to that all day. I think this we could call this good. Call this done. Okay, I got the VG91 hooked up to it. I'm on channel 3. I'm going to use a pair of pliers to try and turn the tuner. Let me do this. I'm on... Put there we go. Putting a one kilohertz test tone through it. Oh, look at that! Okay, so the horizontal frequency is off a little bit. Go to window circle here. Where the contrast at? Okay, I'm gonna adjust the horizontal hold. Looks like it's not doing anything. Let me try a different channel. Stand by. No guarantees that this is going to work, especially with the recap aside issue we got there. Interesting, so that's a audio beat. That's not actually video, that's an audio beat issue. Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, we're not really passing any meaningful video through this and I don't know if that's because the tuner is whacked out or why is it just if I touch it it there we go there we go now or Wow, look at that. Um, stand by. So I figured the channel's out uh, because the knob and everything's missing. I, I got it on channel 3 and I got it dialed in pretty rock solid. I know it's very dim and you can barely see it here. And the vertical's doubled over. And that usually means that the vertical oscillator speed is way off. So what I did is I hooked up this speaker to it so we could listen to it. And you can hear there that it's running really at double speed. So hopefully it's 
this thing is so dim and keep in mind it's sitting up on edge so let me see what I can do here uh, I'm gonna slow it down that's speeding it up So see it'll lock there at double speed. Slow it down. That was that's another spot of the lock. So look at that. A big frowny face. Look at that big frowny face right there. I'm going to try and adjust. That sounds about right to me, the speed of it. If you got a capacitor off by a factor of 10 or 100 or 1,000 in the vertical, it is going to go clinky dinkler die Bible trailer. So I'm going to try and adjust. <laughs> what kind of frowny face is that? I mean, what kind of flipped over? Uh, this is the vertical linearity. Let's see what this does. Really, you can see that, right? So that's not doing a whole bunch. Yeah, so I can't adjust that out of it. But that's the right speed for the vertical. The grrr. But yeah, I can't adjust it out. The vertical's whacked. Also, it's it, it's very dim. There's your staircase. Boy, does that look horrible. Really? Is that really what that looks like? This is, the performance of this is horrific. The horizontal's trash, the vertical's trash. Maybe I should check the B plus real quick. Let's see where the B plus is. If the B plus is low, it could affect all of this if that selenium's bad. They're calling the B plus here at 220. It's at 210. I would not consider that. That's what 5% low. I would not consider 5% enough to cause the vertical not to work. This vertical circuit. It's pretty simple. I always get questions, why does it say do not measure here? That's because if you hook, there's a big, huge AC pulse there. If you hook your meter up to it, it'll probably pop your meter. It could be several thousand volts, the pulse. 
But yeah, I wonder what's going on here. Why? Uh, I'm pretty sure I tested that tube. You know, we got 0 0.01. 0 0.0022, 0 0.02, you know, if we got one of these off, if we got this one and that one mixed up, or we got this 047 screwed up, or the 033, so I'm going to just have to really, like, sit down, and now it's a good thing that I got that red set to compare the, compare it to. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not happy. It's really not happy. So, interesting, all those capacitors in the vertical circuit are all buried down in here. And it looks like none of them have been changed, which in itself is a problem. I mean, that's as bad as not changing them at all. I'm sorry, let me try that again so it's, like, intelligibly logical. Not changing wax paper capacitors in a vertical circuit is as bad as screwing them screwing them up and changing them with the wrong value the vertical circuit is the most critical and wax paper capacitors will really screw up the performance of a vertical circuit so yeah we need to take a look and I really don't want to get into recapping this thing but uh, gamble scog mode to the rescue getting back to our vertical issue I went and photocopied the riders and I had forgotten that about two years ago I did a video on one of these sets um, and I went through it and I had the Sam's and I don't know where I put it but anyway I, I found a couple interesting things on the riders here a couple did you knows did you know that on the Black Beauty Bumblebee capacitors and the postage stamp capacitors that the dot or the little, I don't know what you want to call it, blob of metal there indicates the outer foil. The square on this one indicates the outer foil. And the arrow points towards the outer foil. Did you know that? I didn't. I guess it's only relevant when replacing them and trying to get the outer foil correct on the new capacitors, which don't ever mark the outer foil. Anyway, I think the best way to get into this thing is simply to go through and just check all the parts here. Um, also, we might want to check this plate voltage. It's supposed to be 440 volts. That is the boost that comes from the flyback down here. Comes from the transformer down to the boost from the bottom of the flyback. So maybe we should measure this voltage on the plate. 440 volts and see if that's low before we go any further. Also, it's interesting that um, how many 6U8 tubes this thing uses. It's like all six, there's like five different tubes in it. 6U8, 6CM7, 6AW8. I guess 6CM7 is different than 6CG7. Let me make sure I got the right tube in there. Okay, we've got a 6CG7 in there. Good thing I changed, checked that. 6CG7, 6FQ7 are the same. Um, this calls for a 6CM7. Wait. This calls for a 6CG7. Uh, this is a, one of these is a B, this is a KCS100B, and this is a KCS100D and K. Alright, yeah, this is the B chassis, so it's a 6CG7. 
what I've done is I've just switched these two, the horizontal oscillator and the vertical oscillator output, and we'll see if it changes the deflection at all. I'm sure it's going to be bad capacitors back here. Also addressing the brightness issue, how I said it was so dim. If this capacitor was leaky right here, and some of this 216 volts was getting onto the cathode, see the lower the cathode is the brighter the image. So basically turning the brightness control up towards ground and pulling this DC voltage down um, makes it brighter. So if that was leaky and also this thing uses an ion trap. You just, it's so damn dark you can't. So this thing does use an ion trap and how you get to it is um, really, uh, yeah, here's the instructions on adjusting the ion trap. Fully clockwise and the contrast fully counterclockwise. Starting at the position, adjust the magnet by moving it forward and backward and at the same time rotating it slightly around the neck of the tube for the brightest raster on the screen. This is accomplished by moving the sleeve located between the ion trap magnet and the kinesco neck using long nose pliers. This adjustment may be accomplished on later production receivers by removing the cabinet antenna and blows to magnetic from Shoizy Dierbelerschweiber. A large opening under the schnarz nars large plum fuffle flash parnal lersch. Okay, well we got that. All right, well, the vertical is still jacked, so what I'm going to do, I don't see how to get to this ion magnet. I'm going to take this thing apart, and I believe it shows you in one of these. Yeah, this is how it comes apart right here. I don't know if this will let me get access to the ion magnet, but it should allow me to get access to the capacitors. Um that I need to get rid of or need to check and the resistors. We have 363 volts at this point right here and we have 450 volts at this point. Uh, and that very well could be that we have a, like a leaky capacitor here it's pulling too much current so we do have low voltage. I'm going to check this resistor. It's not a 3900 in this set. It's a 5600. Okay, so if you ever work on one of these, don't forget all these wax capacitors back here behind the vertical output tube. And none of these are easy to get to, but they're all critical. Look at, we have one, two, three, four, five, six capacitors back in here. Leaky wax capacitors. Okay, let's do some basic diagnostics with voltage here because these capacitors are so hard to access and I really don't want to recap this whole thing because the TV is in bad condition and the cabinet's half missing and it's just pretty much a, a I hope you learn something video here. Uh, maybe you have one of these that's complete with all the knobs and the base and the it, just the whole thing. But anyway, I have the vertical output tube pulled out. It's right here. So there's no tube in this socket. And I'm checking the voltage right here on uh, pin 2. Um, I have a ground... I have a wire going to ground on this side of this one meg resistor. So we have plate voltage here. This capacitor should isolate that voltage. So we should effectively have zero here because we're pulled to ground through a one meg resistor. You can see our one meg resistor. The capacitor is down there. Uh, we have 38 volts leaking through that capacitor. So that 
that leak would not only screw this whole circuit up, it would cause the voltage to get pulled down because the tube would be biased on. Let's check the voltage on pin one. So the voltage on pin one with the tube out is 530 volts. So that capacitor is definitely leaky. And this is same thing kind of as an audio output on an AA5 radio. We always go after that capacitor on the audio output, the one that blocks the DC from getting onto the grid of the output. Now let's see if we could check some of these other ones. So we could we check this one? How much voltage should be? So it looks like we're blocked. So we should have basically zero volts at this point right here. Let's find that. We have uh, 0 0.067 at this point. So we have no leakage through that capacitor. So here we have 500 volts right now. We have 500 volts coming through here. This capacitor should block it. I'm measuring this point to ground. And I have one volt. So there is a slight amount of leakage through this capacitor. We do have a 33K going to ground, so that would really indicate more than slight, but I'm going to leave that for now. This capacitor here, not much voltage across that. I think this one, this 033, I think that's our uh, what's causing the majority of our issue with the vertical circuit. So I'm going to change that one. So I popped a new capacitor in there, and now instead of positive 40 volts, we have negative 12 volts, because it actually, if you follow the schematic, it actually feeds a negative voltage off of the uh, horizontal output tube up here. So much, much better. That capacitor was extremely leaky. And actually looking at this, it looks like it made the horizontal better than the vertical. because it's not with the capacitor putting all that positive bias the capacitor was putting a bunch of positive voltage back down into the horizontal output tube okay so now we got 431 volts at that point right there I think we had 360 before we changed that capacitor but I still can't get it to fill out the bottom of the screen all the way and uh, it's interesting though the linearity looks good it's just I can't adjust I got the height maxed out and it's not enough um, to pull it's not enough to pull the picture all the way down so let me see what if what if one of these was leaky taking a little divergence from the vertical circuit I decided to check this right here this point one that I mentioned if it was leaking it would Cause the voltage to not go down low enough on the CRT and keep it from going to full brightness. So here's the voltage on the cathode of the CRT. And I'm turning the brightness down. 117 volts. Turning the brightness up. It goes down to 5 volts. I'm looking at this capacitor that whoever recapped this put in here. It says... Quinchark... And it's like a symbol of a capacitor and a resistor. I wonder what that thing is. I don't think that's what they intended to be in there. Is that some type of industrial motor capacitor or something? Um, yeah, I don't know if a resistor being in series with a capacitor is a good thing. That might act, that might screw the video up. That might screw the video performance up. You really can't see this because it's folded over, but 
it's I can adjust it now so it's good but it's still not enough at the bottom so with the height turned all the way up I'm not getting enough deflection on the bottom I know that doesn't make sense but height is the bottom what I'm doing is I'm I got the tube out and I'm measuring the drop across the 1.2 meg resistor and I got 23 volt drop across the resistor so that I replaced the 033 the 047 must be leaking pulling some of that to ground yeah I cut that capacitor out of there and I have no drop across the resistor and there we go that capacitor I changed it now we got way too much deflection on the bottom and there it is with the vertical all dialed in and both pots are about in the middle both height and linearity are about in the middle so that's perfect there's one other thing I want to adjust on here which is the horizontal waveform okay so horizontal sine wave adjustment is common on most of these black and white sets of this era and you basically just want to do that so we just want to even it up it's pretty close here and it's this coil right here through a high very low capacitance probe I think this is a 1 to 100 probe I could get it in the hole here and that sucker is actually a slotted so yeah you just want to sort of adjust the tilt so they're even you really don't need to do this except this thing was recapped so we're gonna dial it in and right there looks about good like I say the key to this is to use a 1 to 100 probe see that 100x I've got this dialed in pretty good uh, now I'm just trying to dial in the centering rings and unfortunately because the yoke is broken uh, they're just floating there I got it pretty well centered I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit it on its face and put some silicone on those centering rings um, yeah I'm trying to get the brightness to improve and I've checked played with that ion magnet and boy what a finger bender that is and now I'm trying to try, try change the uh, uh, horizontal output and the um, damper with no no difference and I grabbed a 1x2 and that's not the right rectifier I'm, what was it a 1v2 this is a microwave oven um, power supply and I want to try and make a 6AX4 damper with the two diodes that are on this. These are the diodes. I'm going to see if I can take these off and put them in, in the socket, the bad socket. Well, I got to say it actually kind of works. It actually sort of likes that. I got the appropriate rectifier tube which is a 1v2 and it likes that too it's happy so there it is my solid state 6ax4 made with two diodes out of a microwave oven switching mode power supply so looking at the boost with the damper tube I got 480 looking at the boost with my diode thing I got 484 so those diodes seem to be working very very well if you ever wanted to see the inside of a damper tube it's not much to it there's the plate with the cathode tube and then here's the filament with the little coil around it and I think the coil is designed to keep the filament away from the high voltage potential of the cathode.
tube. And there is the cathode tube with the white emitting surface material. And there's the getter, that little round thing. That's all a damper tube is. It's not much to it. I guess it's all in the minerals that all that stuff is made out of. And then of course here's the envelope bulb. So here's what it looks like now. And it really needs the rest of the capacitors changed in the vertical circuit because it's sort of unstable. It's just not real bright. It's not a real good TV. I mean, I think these things were just almost maybe intended to be used on your bed or next to your bed. Because I've seen two or three of these now with good testing CRTs and they're just dim. I mean, it does not have a sharp, bright, black and white picture. It actually sucks. Who's in control of that list and is also in charge of the special unit that prosecutes police officers called the Justice System Integrity Division. By law enforcement officers, we get punished if we abuse our power on the color of authority. These, uh, Mr. Niggas is doing that exactly. Yeah, it really is that bad. has not been charged with a crime. The car he was in was stopped by Azusa PD late on the night of December 10th here along East Alasta Avenue for a traffic violation. Eniguez hasn't responded to our request for comment, but told the LA Times he thinks his arrest was unjust and was retaliation for jumping out of the car and starting to video record the stop. Eniguez has filed a complaint. I'm sorry about it. It's out. It's kind of important. I have to talk to Clint. At this hour, Charles? Well, like I said, it's important. All right, come in. Clay, hey boy, wake up, wake up. Mr. Ingles is here and he wants to talk to you. Come on, come on. I mean, it, it really is that bad. He's still half asleep. Clay, I want you to listen. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to give me an honest answer, all right? The day of the fire, you went and helped her down in the cellar, weren't you? That's just who saw you. What were you doing? I was taking medicine, and a lot of people didn't like the way I was acting with the medicine. Instead of the medicine, I will go to the gym. Hours, hours, sometimes two times a day. I mean, this. It was my way out. This seriously gets an F minus on. Somebody came up to me and was like, man. Performance. twice so far. California. My mission is to make sure you get high quality, affordable Medicare health coverage. That's why Kaiser Permanente Medicare health plans include proof of vaccination or a recent negative test for anyone who purchases tickets to either the parade or the football game. Masks are also required. And should the need arise, the term of roses says it is prepared to adjust its plans. A group of nurses gathered earlier this morning. What does that mean, adjust its plans? Like, cancel the event? Well, the registered nurses picketed outside Alhambra Hospital Medical Center advocating for safer staffing. The California Nurses Association and the National Nurses Union. It is so bad. Nurses are caring for it is. More patients than state law allows. And it's not a weak CRT image. It's just. See what I mean? They're, the the faces are not all cloudy. And it's not bright out here at all. It's like dark and cloudy. I mean, this is horrible. House Oversight Committee will launch an investigation into a crowd surge at the Astro World Music Festival last month. Ten people died. Dozens more were injured. This hearing will focus on 
We could, I could try and adjust the, um, the audio detector to get the buzz out, but why? Absolutely horrible. I have I have nothing nice to say about this. Except I got I got the deflection. I got. I don't see how they could actually sell this like this. It only takes a moment to call the number on your screen, or you can visit loveshriners.org to help other kids just like me view their families this Christmas. Because every child just wants to be home for the holidays, and your gift makes that possible. I May mean, I got the deflection dial? Look at the geometry. I got the geometry perfect. Well, this is ringing in the new year. I don't know if we'll get to see the... So you're not going to show us the, the ball dropping? New cases shattering the previous record from January 4th of really? Year. One month ago, the county had 1,826 new cases. That's a so last year, this is what we did. Is This is the TV that I was working on. We watched the ball drop up to after the TV was was repaired and I guess this is what 2022 is going to be more 
continuation of this garbage. Hi there, Jeff. Well, tonight I can tell you no huge crowds that we've seen here in Santa Monica. It is a little bit busy. You can see some folks behind me. Oh, hell no. Be afraid. Out Stay out inside. This is a good idea. COVID testing site in Santa Monica under the Shore Hotel. It's scary, um, and it's also... It's scary. Kind of like, it feels like we're going back to the beginning. Yeah, Leona, take care of yourself, take care of the family, do what you can to prevent the spread. I, I, well, Omicron cases are surging. Delta is still out there. And that I don't even know what to say. Data shows it can be more dangerous than Omicron. Garbage in, garbage Omicron. out. It's just all garbage. memories of Dick Clark who made his final appearance with us 10 years ago. I know I speak for our entire crew when I say he is with us every year in spirit. Someone else we're thinking about tonight was a very good friend of Dick at his punch. I think what we're seeing is some surging delta that's contributing to the hospitalizations. Dr. Daniel says based on data he's seen from countries like South Africa. Like I said last year we watched the ball drop. It's 9 o'clock here on the West Coast, which would, I don't know if that's going to focus, but which would be midnight in New York on the East Coast, and here we are, constant, non-stop, staying home, be afraid, you know, it's, the, the cold is going to get you, you're going to die, you know, get your jab, just garbage very concerning and uh, like you know, I said yesterday half of the people that are testing positive have no symptoms well shut it all down then so certainly record breaking numbers out here and folks know it they are aware of it obviously still coming out to try and enjoy some semblance of this guy doesn't have a mask on he should be arrested and put in a concentration camp even though the case rate is so high and hospitalizations are too that rate actually versus the cases versus hospitalizations lower than it could be remember hospitalizations at the peak were more than 8,000 in LA County reporting live in Santa Monica I'm Tom Waite KCAL 9 News well the COVID surge is a big concern in Pasadena as well huge crowds will be gathering for tomorrow's Rose Parade and then the Rose Bowl KCAL 9's Jeff Nguyen, he is live in Pasadena where they also This guy's got COVID his mask on. Oh, there he took it off. Well, Jasmine and Jeff, in about an hour, traffic will be closed off along the parade route. And then at 11 p.m., folks can move their chairs, their okay. air mattresses, and well, sleeping bags. I was hoping to has three cups of coffee. do a New Year's thing here on the KCS 100, but... Oh, maybe I just missed it. Who's who's sponsoring it this year? Last year it was Kia. So I All right, well. Sparkling Brute. That's right. You're going to hear a lot of that. Just wait to see what we have coming up. If you thought New York was wild, we got a lot more for you. Stay tuned. No, nothing's wild anymore. Welcome to the Las Vegas New Year's Eve 
countdown to 2022. We're saying goodbye to 2021 in every time zone from coast to coast. We're live from Resorts World with special performances from the Blue Man Group, Cirque du Soleil, a special appearance by the Real Housewives of Orange County's Heather Dubrow, as well as an exclusive performance from country music superstar Scotty McCreary. It's all building up to a spectacular fireworks show from Dallas. I have nothing nice or nothing positive to say about the whole damn thing. I'm just being completely honest. Well, I made a comment about chemtrails in this video. And, uh... Now we have a lake. But hey, we have oranges, so oranges are good. But yeah, I think this is about the worst I remember in recent history. We also have grapefruits, but they are kind of like floating on the lake. <laughs> I mean, this is... Eight inches deep? And yes, the grapefruits are floating in the lake. What they call this geo modification, geoforming, something like that, where they seed rain crystals or something. I don't know. All I know is enough to sound stupid. But this will be an interesting uh, mess to clean up here. <laughs> 